today I invite you into my studio office space, a room I just recently finished, and there was one really big challenge in this room that needed to be addressed. When it came to finishing this room as far as window coverings, I realized I wanted the most amount of daylight possible for the work that I do and for all my plants, but I also needed complete privacy. This room faces the front of the house, and so I you just, you know, just needed to be private at night. It's way to do that. Um, it's not with blinds or with shades, it really is with a curtain. If you want the most daylight during the day and then the most privacy at night, you want a curtain. The problem with a curtain is then you have to, you know, physically open and close them daily. And so we wanted to find a smart powered solution for, for the operating the curtains, which we did. But unfortunately, one of the problems with a smart system like this is it's not particularly attractive. Well, I wanted to find a way to make it look beautiful, obviously. I have created this beautiful room. I wanted a beautiful curtain. And so I'm gonna share with you how I did that. And I know that this is a really great solution. And tell you how happy I am when I walk up the stairs in the morning and the curtains are open. And if I happen to come back up in the evening to watch some TV or something, the curtains are completely closed and I know that I'm completely private and no one knows my whereabouts in the house. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I, I know it's gonna be a great solution for your windows too. So this tutorial is divided into three sections. The first section is about installing the track system and we tried to cover everything you needed to know. The second part is about how I use standard off the rack curtains to work with this track system. And then the third part is about how we built a cornice to hide the unsightly track. So this is the motorized track system. It's a smart system and I have the link below where I bought it from Amazon. And when you open up the box, everything you need is there. It works with Alexa and Google Home apps, and it also has its own remote control that you can just control manually if you'd like. It has a motor there that we chose the one that is powered by an electrical cord because I knew I had an outlet on each side of the window. And so that attaches to the rod, which is completely expandable. And then there's also these rings and they slide into the rod and we'll show you how they work, but that's where you're gonna attach your curtains to. The track system is highly adjustable, but you'll want to know the exact measurement of the width of your curtains beyond your window before you get started. So that's why that tape measure is laying there. We know the width that we wanted was like 80 something inches. And so we're putting, sliding together various bits and pieces of the track to make that exact length. And you just tighten it with this little uh, nut here. You can see here that the motor must sit beyond your casing of the window if you have one. You need to include the measurement of the motor on one side and then also make sure you understand how wide your curtains are and how much they can cover the window when they're open or closed. And I like for my curtains to sit outside the window casing so you just want to make sure you get that right because when you move on to the next step that's when it can't be changed. So here's the part that is a little nerve wracking. You're gonna spread out the gear belt, the screen belt that they send you that comes on a little roll. And you're gonna add this little tab thing at the end. Do you see that little gray tab? That it tells you the measurement you need to cut your belt. So that's why I said you need to get this measurement right. You cut two of them. So you're gonna cut one now, and then you're gonna go and measure another. And then you're going to feed these through the track. Next step is to put this belt buckle onto the green belt and it just slips into there and then you carefully put together with the little teeth fitting inside there just so and push that together until it snaps. You will put the belt buckles on two of the ends just like this. Next you're going to put the belt buckle into the runner wheel and slide it through the track on one side. And for the sake of understanding, we're gonna call this the left side. So you're gonna slide the wheel all the way down until the very end. And once you get to the end of the track, you're going to let it hang out a little bit. And then you're going to put the runner wheel on the second belt and put it into the right hand side, making sure that the teeth are facing each other and the inside of the track. And now that we've put the carrier wheel in from the right, the one on the left is going to get pushed back in. And what's going to happen is you're going to have two wheels on the track and two, and two bare ends of the belt. 
the green belt. And I don't have a picture of that, but you'll just have to trust me. Um, so what I've done here now is taken the belt, the empty ended belt, and fed it through the end loop of the track. And, so you, and then once you get done putting the belt on there, you're going to add the belt clip and the carrier wheel and then close the track up and you'll repeat that for the other side. So now you'll have four carrier wheels on your track and they will get paired up so that you can attach these brackets. And these brackets are what holds the ends of the curtains and creates an overlap so you don't have any light leakage when the curtains are closed. An important thing to note here is the way that the two overlap each other. And they make it so that when you install this track or if you install this track on the ceiling, you don't want to install the track on the ceiling and flush up against the perpendicular wall. If you do that, the track system won't slide on that back panel. So you'll want to allow at least a half an inch in order to uh, allow for this curtain to close properly. One of the last things you do is add the rings or the runners that your curtains are going to hang from. And you do that by loosening the tensioner and adding them in. And if you don't get the count right when you're figuring out your curtain, it's okay. It's super easy to reduce this tensioner and add more rings in later. <laughs> you're beyond. We marked the rafters on the ceiling with tape after we found it with the stub finder. And you see here, this is where it was installed incorrectly. Do not put that bracket flush up against the wall. But once you get those brackets installed and on your studs and everything is good, um, you, they just snap in there. You pull back on this little white clip and it just snaps in. What y'all doing? <laughs> so you'll plug in your motor and that little piece that's hanging down, that's the part that speaks to your Wi-Fi. And it also just uh, turns and snaps into the rod. And then you have a rod that opens and closes with a remote control. And that's a great way to test it before you get to the point of uh, hanging your curtain and um, then uh, programming it with your apps. So in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to tell you how uh, to you hang regular, just standard off-the-rack curtains and get them to work with this track system. You can see here that I, the key to it is to add a pleat tape to the top. Uh, my curtains needed some lining too, so I added that. They were a little on the semi-sheer side, so I just pinned on the lining and I'm going to sew it on. You could also do this with just iron-on tape, but the key element here is the pleat tape at the top. You want one that's nice and thick and sturdy and not at all flimsy. Those won't stand up straight on the pins. You want to also make sure that you put that little slot that the pins are going to go to at the bottom. The other thing I really like about this pleat tape, other than it being nice and stiff and sturdy, is they have those little guidelines there that show you where to sew it. And this pleat tape is from Hobby Lobby. As far as the pins, um, I started with a lot less and I had really pleated them. This is like a, a triple pleat kind of. Um, I decided to just make it a tiny little pleat. So from the back, once it's hanging, it has just a little bit of a pinch here. And I have uh, 16 pens and I have them spaced three, three little slots apart. Um, you need that many so that it hangs and slides. Also take note of the position of the hook on these pleater hooks. You see how the hook is a bit lower? You don't want the long neck hooks. They hook up higher and more of the track system will be seen. And while we're building a cornice to cover the track, you still want the curtain to hang as high up on the ceiling as possible. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how I hid the ugly track system. And this was very important to me from the beginning. I didn't want to see the track system. I think it's unattractive. And so once you get your curtains hung on your track, you're going to move the tape out um, to mark the studs again because you're going to use that to hang a cleat that you're going to attach a cornice So to. we marked this distance and pre-drilled our holes into the 2x2 two two so that the screws could go nice and tight up into the rafters. The next thing is we're going to build a cornice. And I'll have a written tutorial for this section in my blog post linked below. But basically, you're going to build a three-sided box that encapsulates the curtain and of course the mechanism and we chose to do it with a miter corner, but that is not necessary. You can just put it together in a basic cut. Using wood glue and a 90 degree corner bracket, we attached the two pieces together and applied 
pin nails and allowed it to dry overnight. The next morning we were ready to attach it to the cleat that was already on the wall. We didn't have to worry about covering the brad nails because we added a piece of chair rail to the top. And the nice thing about that was we were able to get the chair rail flush against the ceiling because the ceiling was not level. And this room currently doesn't have any crown molding so chair rail seemed easiest and still gave me that finished look. And so if you notice here, you can see a little bit of the mechanism on the side of the curtain. And I'm going to fix that by getting some adhesive Velcro to put on the mechanism and the curtain. And then to hide the cord, I used a cord cover and that's done a really good job of hiding where it connects. If there was one complaint I could make about the system is that the cord that comes with the mechanism is not long enough to plug into anything that I would think would be reasonable. Don't forget to check out the blog post for complete directions on how to build the cornice and an overview of all the things that I have talked about here. I'll also include a link to this system below. I really honestly couldn't be any happier with it. We have ours set up on a timer to open and close in the morning and in the evening with Alexa and it also works with Google. I really am so very happy with it.